Good morning, YouTubes. I have driven towards Chichester. Going to walk a little trail now, uh, Kingly Vale. Lots to see and do along this, from uh, all through history, through the ages, right from I think uh, the Iron Age, Bronze Age, uh, possibly right up to World War II. So stick with me. Romans ever done for us. <laughs> That's like a lot of pan out of big holes, isn't it? All camping. Wholesome, wholesome, that little fella, clearly loves it. So just to give you a little uh, little forward, so Kingly Vale, this was the country's first national nature reserve, established in 1952, okay. There are some trees here that are 500 years old, uh, measuring five metres in girth. What else have we got? Lots of species of plants, Okay, the reserve also contains one of the most important concentrations of well-preserved archaeological sites in southern England, including 14 scheduled monuments, of which the Devil's Humps and Goose Hill are the most prominent. Uh, World War II Home Guard Auxiliary Units. There's all sorts to see here, so um, let's get on it, eh? Yeah, you can tell these trees are old. Like well, something from Narnia. Okay, all these branches and limbs are just this one tree in the centre. Wow! Yeah, and it's one of those things, I don't know if the camera does it justice, I mean, the age is palpable. Palpable? Yeah. So just to uh, give an educational element, the yew tree is magical because as the branches hit the ground they can then take root and spring up new trees, which is a clever old trick. And, uh, it's impressive isn't it? Oh.
very much like a fairy tale forest, isn't it? With all the twisted limbs and whatnot. Almost cave-like. You know, the lower limbs aren't much more than four or five feet off the ground. This little sausage dock. So I'm leaving the yew tree forest now and we're uh, sort of on the uh, nature reserve trail. I'm using view ranger for this trail and uh, whoever manages this uh, nature reserve they've teamed with view ranger to do a really good interactive tour uh, to point out all the points of interest. That's interesting. There's also an Android app with um, an augmented reality mode on some of the points of interest. So. We might have a look at that later if it works. So apparently this whole open area, they've used uh, LiDAR, subterranean LiDAR mapping and this used to be an ancient fort uh, dating back to 7000 BC, which is uh, old. Right, according to this, I'm well, it's here somewhere. There's a World War II ammunition store under my feet somewhere. <laughs> and I should be able to find some sort of evidence of access to it, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling. The technology's let me down. Cracking views over there. Like. Let's have a bit more of a scout around. Well, I ain't to give up, but I can't find it. <laughs> According to the information, people even find ammunition, and there's an emergency number you should ring if you if you find some. Oh, hang on. There's a stick sticking out of the ground over there. Okay. Well, not a stick, a pole. Let's have a look at that. Well, I'm not sure. Someone's definitely put that there, but whether it's meant to be an indicator post, I've no idea what that is. I don't know. Is it somewhere? I obviously can't find it. I don't know what I expected to find. Obviously not a great big neon pink glowing sign, secret munitions bunker right here. But, I don't know. I wonder if I, I skipped straight past something. No idea. Well, I just uh, I just come a cropper over there. Uh, I slipped on the mud. Had to uh, had to stop and demud my hands. But uh, I didn't feel too bad because someone else then came out. Looked like they had expensive hiking boots on, and they did exactly the same in exactly the same spot. So I wasn't alone. Wow, this is dense. Really dense. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling a little let down, so apparently 
there are uh, the remnants of a flint mine here. Um, unless they mean it's underground, but I can't show you a flint mine. I'll, I'll show you that view instead over there. That's quite nice. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling I've let you all down. The trail leaflet promised you'd see all these sort of ancient artifacts and memorials and I'm uh, yeah should have bought my metal uh, my metal detector and got Tony Robinson along with me I can't see any evidence of a flint mine anywhere unless it's below my feet Don't get me wrong, this is a lovely walk. Some amazing changeable landscape and some of the ancient trees and woodlands. You can appreciate those, you can see them, you can touch them. Um, I feel they, are, they were overselling the uh, ancient ruins and whatnot because I cannot see anything. Now I will say, on the, uh, on the guide in the app, it gives, it gives each, uh, each point a search difficulty rating and I mean that one was a 10 but sorry not a 10 it was a 4 a 4 out of 10 so I should have been able to stumble across a, a flint mine with relative ease you would think but nope anyway let's just enjoy the walk and the ancient trees So a lot of those ancient artefacts are, are marked on that map, uh, suggesting they are easy to find, maybe. Maybe I need to go to Specsavers. I've missed everything thus far. Like Bambi on ice. I'm beginning to think that uh, a lot of the information boards for the ancient monuments have perhaps been removed. I couldn't imagine why. Uh, I only say that because the AR app that I've got, obviously you're meant to walk around, there's an information board with a QR code, point the phone at it, and then it plays whatever video to, you know, show you the... Uh, Iron Age 4, you know, projects a video on the phone where you're pointing the camera. And I haven't seen any boards or any QR codes aside from, at the very start, to be uh, at the visitor centre. So I'm wondering if uh, maybe a lot of stuff has been removed. But, you, I don't know. You, you couldn't remove ancient monuments, could you? I suppose if they they need to be protected, perhaps, but there's definitely been no no information boards around any of the points I've been looking for. So very strange. Anyway, we will continue and just just enjoy the wonders of nature, minus the ancient artifacts and monuments. Oh oh, what do we have here in the distance? Oh, wrong not to. Can't see any ancient monuments from up here either. Yep, I do spy an information board. Let's see what's on this one. Well, goddammit, look. I'm eating my own words. 
I've got one. Let's try it. But there should have been a few of these. This is a uh, this is point of interest at number eight on this trail, and I've, I've not seen one of these before now. Let's give it a go anyway. Secrets of high words. Uh, okay, start. AR. Loading. Scat. Oh, hang on. Okay, you can't see that, but at the top it says video initialization error, so. Oh, it's not even going to work anyway. Oh well. So apparently, there's a fort here. Somewhere. You can't really see it. <laughs> and the technology can't really bring it to life. It's such a shame. I was quite excited to, to sort of see that, like, stand out in front of my eyes, but... I feel a bit let down. Alright, after all that disappointment, I think we'll uh, sit down on this fallen tree and have a spot of lunch. Because my lunches never disappoint. I've made a discovery. Can you see it? How about now? Little cash. Should we have a look inside, see what we can find? Call geocache site, please read. What kinds of uh, little items in there? I'm not sure what I got to leave behind. I'll sign the book if there's a book in there. I might have something. Maybe some hand wipes. <laughs> what do we got? Cuddly toy. Little uh, hooty horn. <laughs> Looks like some sort of McDonald's Jurassic Park Happy Meal uh, toy. A free CD from the Sunday Mirror. <laughs> ah, shoe polish. Look, very good as an emergency stove. Just imagine if I was out here stranded, I could cook on that. Buy some food to cook. <laughs> More bits and pieces. Well, we'll have a look at the book. See what's in the book. As you see, I've got some water on. Um, I had a little look at the logbook in that micro cache and that the opening pages uh, this uh, this replacement logbook was placed here in 2007 date in 2007 so it's been here a while you know it's 2021 last entry was November uh, 2021 actually it's 2022 isn't it but yeah it's been here a while but uh, I'll dig through my bag and uh, find a pen and fill in the log in a minute yeah nice little find I used to be, I lie, I was never into geocaching, I once dabbled with it and I could never find anything and I just assumed that the caches had been stolen or vandalised, uh, you know, probably probably did it around my local woods for a couple of weeks and never found a damn thing, so gave up on it. That is the first, honest to God, one I've ever come across and I wasn't even looking. There you go. I know, I thought I was going to get a free ammo can, but yeah, we'll leave it there. Oh, that's wonderful. Sounds like we're boiling. Yep. <laughs> Pasta today. That's all I could get at the petrol station. Wow, boiling water's hot. Okay, so we leave that simmer away, 10 minutes or so. And then we'll throw in some uh, sauce. And uh, of course I'm going to stick some meat in it. I wanted sausages. 
petrol station didn't have proper sausages so I've got cocktail sausages we'll break those up and throw it in should, should be fine should be lovely that's what we got a bit of pasta mascarpone sauce little pork sausages will do the trick won't it mm. that's uh yeah that's ticking all the boxes honestly i know it's simple but it's so much more fulfilling than noodles <laughs> it's exactly the same really just with a bit of sauce and a bit of meat thrown in Mm. Better than sandwiches too, it's just something about a warm meal, isn't it? It just gets you right in the cockles. Mm. Bring on the coffee and dessert. Well, that's me dessert. As I wait for my coffee to cool down. Um, Part three now, so might be a little dark by the time we get back. But I've got the torch today, so nothing to worry about. And truly, I thought there was going to be more to actually see on this walk. Don't get me wrong, like I said, the uh, the yew trees and the, the, the woods and the, the views are really nice. But I thought there would be like ancient monuments and memorials and you know, sort of historical artefacts you'd be able to see, but it's nothing really, um, which is funny. When you go to Dartmoor, like, there's evidence of historical ruins everywhere. I mean, you can quite literally see it with your own eyes, but obviously here, I think, it's sort of saying, oh yeah, it was here, but it's not now. But just imagine this is where it used to be, which it's not the same, is it? It's not the same. Anyway, I'm gonna get this coffee and me, uh, me chocky down me now. Right, we are on the move again. Uh, the remaining half of the trail. It's not a uh, there and back, but it's the other half of the loop we're doing now. Again, I'm not sure what what there's gonna be to see. So far, that little geocache has been my best discovery, aside from the ancient trees. I enjoyed those. Anyway. Let's get on it. Well, that's a bench with a fine view, isn't it? Now, this is meant to be one of these, uh, it's meant to be something notable here. Now, I can see a, <laughs> an iron beam in the ground. Some lead caps on these posts. Now, the view's nice. I'll give you that. Let's have a look in view range and see what it says. Let's have a look. Okay, point number 10. Well, I'm not quite there yet. Apparently it's over there somewhere. I'm back. Okay, so apparently, where I just stopped, there are some mounds, and the mounds cover ancient burial chambers dating from 2200 BC to 1500 BC. I don't know. I wish I could show you some ancient burial mounds. No idea. Nice view though, isn't it? Nice view at least. <sighs> Guess who's still going to be walking when it's dark? OK. 
Okay, now we're in for the board dead ahead. Uh, what they're stating here is, once again, to sum this up, burial mounds. And they've used sort of subterranean lidar uh, scanning to spot these. And they think ancient kings, tribal chiefs, um, some of them dating back to 6,000 years. But I'm about to eat humble pie. Maybe that's a burial mound. That one with the cow on top. Is it a cow or a sheep? Let's go, uh, let's go say hello. I'm assuming these are the mounds that they're talking to, but why the information board is 100 metres over there and not here? Maybe that's why I'm confused. He looks like the black sheep of the family, doesn't he? These have got to be the burial mounds, haven't they? I'm stood on one. There's one over there. Got to be it. Holy sheep are quite skittish. So, just a quote. Known as the Devil's Humps and the King's Graves, many legends and folklore surround these Bronze Age barrows. Whether the truth Whatever the truth, the commanding position at the very top of Kingly Vale is a clear indication that they mark the resting place of important people, perhaps tribal leaders. This may be evidence of the beginnings of social hierarchies at this time. So truly, they're not really sure, are they? No one's found any skeletons or bodies or actual burial tombs. And there's, yeah, make of it what you will, eh? History! Some of it's made up. I want to get a filter on that. So without sounding too critical, I think you have to take things like that with a pinch of salt. The fact that the passage uses the words folklore and legend tells you that well, we're not sure if this is fact. I'm sure the assumption is made that somewhere else some similar looking mounds were excavated and they found a burial chamber or sarcophagus or something very telling and that's the assumption isn't it because they've not really looked okay our next point of interest should be to my right somewhere let me turn my screen brightness up there and then you might be able to see me a little better right so we are in some thick woods it's still daylight out there just about and we are looking for an auxiliary patrol observation post base world war ii 1945 to 39 and it's here somewhere allegedly ha uh -huh. ha oh is that it oh my god if i find something i'm i'm gonna be ecstatic let's have a look no, it's just... Oh, I don't know. Let's have a look-see. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. I mean... Is this it? Did I? Like any other random hole in the woods. Not much to see regardless. Okay, just to... So, the collapsed remains of a West Stoke World War II auxiliary patrol underground store or hideout. The hatch was constructed from four support posts and rivet, riveted with corrugated iron. This hideout would have been camouflaged and very difficult for the enemy to locate when in use. I just have no idea. That innocent looking hole in the ground may have been it. I have no idea. Truly. 
I don't know. Sadly, that was not it. That was a hole in the ground with some uh, corrugated steel sheeting. Um, I'm not doing very well at this, am I? This voyage of discovery. Pheasant. Well, I think I've just about got all the daylight that I'm going to get out of this place. Funny old place. Uh, ancient yew trees, absolutely magnificent. Never seen anything like that. If you like trees that look like they come to life at night, this is the place. Everything else, a bit hit and miss. Bit of a wild goose chase. I don't know what it is. I, I like my history to be there. I like to see it and touch it. Like uh, Rygate Fort, you know? That's from uh, the late 18, it's from 1896. Well, it's all still there, you can see it, but this was a bit of a wild goose chase, to be polite. Um, but there you go, I've had a nice day. Last one in the car park as usual. Everyone else has cleared out. I wouldn't have it any other way. Can I make more light? Let's have a quick... Oh! There we go, that's not too bad. You can sort of see me now. Um, interesting day out. It doesn't all always go according to plan. Um, the ancient yew tree forest, really cool. Other things I was expecting to see, you just couldn't see them. Maybe they're there, maybe they're below the ground. Maybe it's just, this is what used to be here. But um, I don't know, I felt slightly misled because the leaflet for this place sort of suggested these are all the amazing things you'll see. And it uh, wasn't the case. Anyway, if you're still watching, you must be a glutton for punishment or you just enjoy watching me suffer. Um, anyway, thank you very much for uh, taking so much pleasure in my displeasure and suffering. I'm only joking, I enjoyed it. Um, and I'll see you all again soon.